Hey guys, it's James and I'm back with another ETF comparison video. I wanted to look at QQQY. It is a new ETF that uses daily options. I want to compare it with two other ETFs and then I want to go to my compound interest comparison calculator and do a speed test with QQY versus the other two uh, ticker symbols or the other two option ETFs and see what different type of portfolio values we could get while playing around with the fund stats and the fund growth and contribution numbers. Now this calculator might be a lot to handle if it's the first time you have looked at it. I do have explanation videos for the calculators over here on the overview tab and how to use my workbook that you can purchase over on Patreon. I do have the workbook instructions as well. But today we're just looking at the compound interest analysis calculator. Mainly, we just look at 10 years in the future for the two different funds side by side, and then the type of income we could receive with the type of portfolio value we would have at each year. So QQY is Defiance's NASDAQ 100 Enhanced Option Income ETF. This ETF sells options. They sell in the money puts. They sell in the money puts at zero days to expiration. So they don't sell weekly or monthly options, giving a chance for the market to go to the wrong side of their option. It's a little bit easier to manage if you only write zero days to expiration options. Now this fund is fairly new. It's only been around a month. So that is one of the issues with this fund. However, with it only being around a month, it has already generated around $106 million worth of assets under management. And they charge you close to a 1% expense ratio. And in my workbook, we can play around with the expense ratios as well and remove them and just to see how much that affects the overall portfolio value for our funds. But they do charge you a 1% expense ratio, which is the highest on this list today. The next ETF I wanted to compare it against is the very popular JEPI or JP Morgan's Equity Premium Income ETF. JEPI is also an options ETF, believe it or not. They write out of the money calls on the S&P 500 index and they claim to achieve about a 7.7% annual yield compared to Defiance's annual yield of close to 70%. But again, this fund has only been around for about a month. If you do check out QQY on Seeking Alpha, their distribution yield, they've only had one distribution for about $1.10 and that's about 6% yield. Uh, based on an annualized basis that comes out to be about 60 to 70 percent but on, on a month basis that's about six percent per month but the funny thing is is they did drop about six percent in value as well so this in this etf i would probably hold off on it just to see the long-term performance over the course of about a year to two years let it get some time under its belt let the price settle a little bit and then determine a more long term consistent yield. Whereas JP Morgan, if you look at a larger history of it, you can see that the fund did raise in price, but in the past year or so it has become very stagnant with a very consistent close to 10% yield where their website only says they expect about a 7.7, but they're achieving about a 10% 12 month trailing yield. The last ETF on this list I'd like to take a look at, and it is actually the best performing ETF so far, is SVOL. They also sell options or deep out of the money, OTM, out of the money call options, seeking to provide low cost protection against extreme volatility or VIX spikes. So SVOL, if you go look at their max graph, their inception date was around May of 2021. So this fund has had about two years to settle out. It has lost about 13% in price performance, where it started around $25 and now it's around $22, where it peaked out around $28. However, it has an impressive 17.27% 12-month trailing yield. Taking a look at its dividend history, you can see it's paid a pretty consistent from $0.26 cents all the way to uh, currently today, it's paying around 30 cents on a monthly basis. JP Morgan, taking a look at their dividends. If we take a look at their dividend history, 
we can see that their max dividend payout a little bit more fluctuating than SVOL, but still paid out on a monthly basis. It looks like their lowest payout was around 26 cents, with their highest payout being around 61 cents. Coming over to the calculator, let's first take a look at JEPI. So QQY versus JEPI, the dividend yield. We're going to go ahead and put in what the website says. Now, obviously, this is going to change a lot over the next course of the next 12 to 24 months. At once QQQY has the same amount of time under its belt as JEPI and SVOL. But we're going to put 60% here. We'll go ahead and change it to 30 and see how that changes the numbers. But keeping it at 60 for now, 10% for JEPI, expense ratio of 0.35, expense ratio of 0.99 with a $500 a month addition. We're going to go ahead and assume that you're not expecting any type of price appreciation or growth for either of these option funds. All you're expecting is a high distribution or a high yield. We're going to go ahead and reinvest those dividends with a $0 initial deposit. And here's what we get. I do not expect over the course of the next 12 to 24 months that you're going to see a very consistent 60% uh, dividend yield. So I wouldn't take too much weight into these numbers that are about three to 10 years off for QQQY. But I would, I do feel pretty confident in JEPI's numbers. If you recall, JEPI back over on Seeking Alpha's graph there last year, they have remained pretty flat. So if you have invested in JEPI over the last 12 months, you would have expected around a 10% total return. And most of that would have been in the distribution yield. So I'm pretty comfortable with JEPI's numbers. After about 10 years with $500 invested a month, starting at $0 on day zero, you'd have around $95,000 at the end of the 10 years, that comes to about $8,000 a year in dividends. And again, this is with dividends reinvested. If you were to pull your dividends out with $500 a month in both funds, this is what you could expect. Pulling your dividends out, JP, JEPI, around $60,000 with this type of distribution yield. We now have SVOL's information in the calculator with that dividend yield of, I rounded it to 17% instead of 17.27. Its expense ratio currently is 0.66%, a $500 monthly addition, and then a 0% annual growth rate. Taking a look at their market price over the past two years, it has a uh, settled around this 20 to $22 mark. So we'll go ahead and just assume a 0% flat growth, no price appreciation that this fund has found its uh, level between 20 and $25. We'll say 0% annual growth. You can see it does outperform JEPI only slightly with dividends reinvested. That 17% dividend over the course of 10 years gives you about $35,000. If you recall, JEPI ended around $95,000. And you would have expected around $18,000 after 10 years at a 7%, 17% yield. Now let's see if changing the expense ratio changes anything because i'm really curious with this large expense ratio for svol let's say svol had a 0.35 percent expense ratio like jepi how does that change the numbers but it only changes it very slightly it only gives you an extra about two thousand dollars so over the course of 10 years that's only about 200 dollars per year on average for an extra 0.3 to 0.4 expense ratio. If we put it to zero, 0% zero really doesn't do much. So anything under that 1% rate expense ratio, let's go ahead and just see what 1% does. So from a 0% expense ratio to a 1%, it really only shaves off around $6,000 over 10 years, which is about $600 per year. So it's up to you if you feel that $600 per year is worth achieving a 17% dividend yield, which is definitely a market beating or at least matches the market. So let me know what you thought of this analysis in this video. Let me know which funds you would rather invest in. If you would choose QQQY, JEPI, or SVOL, and why and with that
thanks for watching.